Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Shoe Snob Unboxing Video Series One Take Wonders. Here we are back again with something brand new. Uh, something I'm sure that many of you have not heard of. Um, a newer brand on the scene. One that is a little bit different and unique compared to many of the very classic shoes that I show. So let's dive right into it. All right. So here we are with the box, black box. Now, I'm not sure if I would send just a standard box for the purpose of marketing. Many of you should know, all of these shoes are sent for me, sent to me for unboxing videos. A lot of times, these are not shoes that, well, let's just go full, full, uh, full blown discretion. I don't pay for these shoes, I don't buy these shoes. And a lot of times I don't wear these shoes because I have my own shoe collection. So uh, I think sometimes when they just wanna highlight the shoes, I don't always get the box that potentially would have been sent to a client because this one is not branded. So I imagine the ones that clients get are branded. There is a sticker indicating uh, what the shoe is and what size. The box is solid though, which is nice. Now let's take a look at the shoes. All right, so black tissue paper wrapped tightly. You got some foam there. You got some black bags. So we got a theme going on with color black. Black felt bags. All right, pretty straightforward. Nothing else inside. Let's put that away and let's take a look at the shoes. All right, here I went for something a little bit different. Uh, the bags are nice like thick, it's like a duck canvas, duck cotton or whatever you call it. And it feels similar to my uh, trousers by Yosel. Um, pretty thick, which is nice and strong. Uh, I presume they will protect your shoes, put those away. All right, so here we are with something different. Now, for those of you that have followed me for a long time, I have like a love-hate relationship with exotic leathers. I like them to a certain degree. I like them when they're not too ostentatious. I like them in smaller, I like them as like a accent piece to let's say an Adelaide shoe where you have it on the facing of the Adelaide. But generally speaking, I'm not crazy about shoes that are made entirely out of uh, exotic. Although the older I get, the more I warm up to it. And I like the exotics that are a little bit more subdued, like less flash. I like suede version of exotic. So anyway, one thing that I never liked was snake, and this is Python, but I thought these were cool when I saw them, so I said, let's, let's take a look at this. Um, also, because I am a sucker for blue. So, blue Python, and what I liked was the scales weren't super, uh, I don't know even how to put it, but they weren't super like loose, where you feel like you could just scrape it off with your fingernails. These are quite tight, tight pressed. So it doesn't seem, I mean, in my eyes, I see the ones that are loose as weak because I feel like you could easily destroy that. Whereas this seems a lot more uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it because I'm not an expert in exotics, but this seems a lot more like, like it's not gonna flake off on you, so to speak. So anyway, uh, again, those that know me know that I love a nice string loafer. Uh, and so I thought these were really cool. They were different, they were unique, something that I definitely uh, have never had before or even uh, viewed. And as I'm getting excited talking about all this new stuff that I'm <laughs> experiencing, I forgot to mention the name of the brand because it wasn't on the box. So the name of the brand is, and I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is Le Cure, which I believe is a, uh, must be a French, let's put the sole, a uh, French word. I don't actually know what it means, but Le Cure was started by a gentleman who has a passion for dressing well uh, out of Texas by the name of Juan Reed. And he's got a nice Instagram account that you can see a lot of what he does and offers. Um, he's a relatively new brand uh, on the scene and he, I guess, specializes in 
the way he puts it is being able to get his client really anything they want, but I know he specializes in things that are quite colorful, quite vibrant. He likes exotics. There's a lot of two tones. So more for the person looking for something, not for the faint of heart. You know, if you want a black Oxford cap toe, maybe sure he can make you one, but I don't think that's what you really go to his brand for. You go for Python string loafers in blue with a double sole and a storm well, something that you don't ever think to put together, but that you can because you want a substantial loafer, but you just don't want it in any other run of the mill color that you can get anywhere else. So Le Cure, new brand on the scene. Uh, I will share a little bit about the shoes in terms of obviously he labels himself a designer. He's obviously not a producer. Um, and he says he sources the shoes from various factories, places, countries, etc., depending on the needs of the client. So these come from Bespoke Factory. Now, that is another video that I'm gonna do, but Bespoke Factory is not an actual factory. They are a middleman sourcing agent for a town in Spain, or maybe even multiple towns in Spain, to be able to get you anything you want and kind of cut the need for a customer to deal directly with the factory, which being that I do deal directly with factory, I can tell you it's not easy to do. So Bespoke Factory in that regard is very smart because they allow easy access to multiple factories in Spain all in one place, which is a great idea. Um, I tip my hat to them on a business level. There are some downsides to this, but Again, I want to make a video about this subject. Anyway, these shoes were sourced from Bespoke Factory, meaning they are made in Spain. And they do say original, original Goodyear Welt. So Goodyear Welted loafers. He has also told me that he has relationship with factories in Asia as well as one in Romania. And that he can even do uh, bespoke footwear. Uh, with fittings and lasts and everything and I'm not sure if that comes I know that's not going to come out of bespoke factory But I didn't clarify if that came out of Romania or Asia, but nevertheless the idea is there uh, the option so to speak So Le Cure, for those of you that have owned held bespoke uh, factory source shoes, you know, it's a very uh, How to put this a quite standard Goodyear welted shoe these were unique because I've never had a loaf for this heavy. Um, you know, this is a, this is not a double leather sole, which is interesting, but it's a very thick welt, which almost looks like a double leather sole. But at the same time, it gives the appearance because it has a storm welt. And I've never had a storm welt on a pair of loafers, but I think that's cool because it allows me to wear them uh, in the colder days or colder weather, so to speak. Uh, also because they ran a little bit big, so I'm gonna have to wear them with uh, warm, uh, thicker socks. So I ordered my typical size of uh, US 7.5, which usually fits me tight, snug, because I like a snug fit, but these were loose, so do beware. Uh, probably half size down to your regular size when you order through them. Um, the sock liner, the liner, is, the liner is interesting. It's a nice color. It's like a nude beige, not even beige. It's like cream color and it says Le Cure there. Seems like a nice lining. It's lined all the way through, which is very common of Italian makes, to be honest. Not as much in Spain, but maybe that was a personal decision. Um, in terms of quality, and craftsmanship, I don't really see anything. I know there's one <laughs> one thing that I deal with on a personal level, and I know and I can see this right here, is when you have a storm welt or a welt in general, uh, in order to c create the welt or connect the welt, you have to basically join two ends together. And you usually, well, when I made shoes by hand, you did that by cutting both ends at a at a 45 degree angle and basically joining them to become to look like a seamless piece except for you know in bespoke shoemaking you do that by hand flawlessly because you spend time on it but in 
manufacturing, it's not always so flawless. So you can see that the storm well where it meets is not exactly uh, level or flush, but this is not something, I know some people look at this and think that's a flaw. It's not a flaw. It's just the fact that the Spanish don't tend to do that flawlessly, uh, seamlessly. Now, I'm not saying that all Spanish factories have that issue because I'm sure Carmina probably does a great job. But uh, again, when you notice that as a client and you're not really, you're new to all of this, that is not a cut or a break or anything. That is simply not a flawless joining of the welt, which is just the way it goes. Just is what it is. This is what you pay for when you spend the into the upper uh, upper price points of shoemaking. Other than that, it's a really solid shoe with clean making, clean finishing. I will show you the the Python certainly has no no blemishes or anything. Very lovely indeed. Something curious. <laughs> Juan Reed put shoe snob on the heel, which I I found funny. I kind of chuckled at that. I never. Uh, I never realized that was a thing, engraving of the name on the heel until I received these shoes. So, you know, that's a little uh, a little cool detail for those of you that like kind of monogramming, um, engraving. You want to put a special phrase or your name, and I believe that's obviously available. I'm not sure if there's an upcharge for it, but uh, I thought that was cool. I thought that was interesting. Personally, I don't engrave stuff. I don't monogram my shirts or anything like that, but you know, to each his own. Uh, again, the sole, obviously, again, this is a string loafer and blue python, but it's built as a, a robust shoe. So you got the storm well, and then you have the kind of rubber inset pieces on the sole as well, so that you can wear it in more kind of harsher weather conditions. Overall, the shoe is extremely robust. Um, Juan Reed also has, uh, Le Cure also has shoe trees that are branded, cedar shoe trees, very standard, nice. The cedar smell. Anyway, what I liked about Juan Reed was that he was out there doing things different. He brought his brand, he had his ideas, and Le Cure is for those of you that really want something unique, so to speak. You don't go to a site and see anything that's average. It's all quite uh, different. Uh, some in a good way, some in a bad way. It just kind of depends on your taste. He really likes loafers because there's a ton of loafers and I love loafers. So there's a lot of actually really cool things. Um, and I believe while obviously there's an interface that looks like you just choose, I'm pretty sure this is just, it's like a, it's like a made to order idea. It's like, here's, some samples, some options, but I think you could really take it to sky's the limit if you just reach out and kind of explain what you want. That again is kind of the beauty of Bespoke Factory is being that they connect you to many other factories, you have a huge option, uh, you have a huge amount of options to kind of choose from, whether you know it's cemented, uh, casual soles, Blake stitch, welted, whatever you name it, you can create some unique things through the meshing of different uh, factories' capabilities. Uh, so yeah, you, you actually will see a lot of his loafers paired with those kind of white foam soles that are quite popular these days, kind of the blending between dress and casual, which uh, you know I think to a certain degree suits some styles, not others. But anyway, uh, Juan Reed has been a, you know, a supporter of the blog and reached out to me and wanted to feature his shoes. And I'm always happy to support people who I think are out there using their passion to create something. Uh, by no means is this something I believe that pays his bills. He does this as a passion project, which I respect, you know, he likes shoes and he wants to get shoes to, I think, like-minded people that like them like he does. So, uh, I think that's great. I like that he carved his own little niche out and really is doing things that are quite unique and quite different, like these blue python storm welted Goodyear welted loafers. So sorry that I haven't given you more close-ups. Let me just give you a couple twists here. Um, nice kind of soft chisel last shape. Uh, again, very substantial shoe. 
nice blue. It looks, I think, brighter in the screen. It's not so bright. It's definitely a very noticeable blue, but it's not crazy bright. Um, either way, solid shoe. Uh, be able to wear those. The weather's taking a turn here in New York, so soon I'm gonna be uh, getting my warm socks on and wearing my, actually, you can see I already got my first day of wearing a flannel suit because it dropped below 70 today. So uh, I like to be warm, so I thought I'd bundle up. Anyway. I hope you guys appreciated something different. Uh, I got like a queue of shoes to do, so I'm trying to do my best to get these videos out, but at the same time, not flood my blog with just the same content and Instagram page. I know that the powers that be these days don't like when you just constantly pump out the same stuff. So trying to space out the unboxing videos, but I definitely have some cool stuff in the works. So do stay tuned. You're going to enjoy what I have. All right. Uh, lastly, as always, if you enjoy these videos, please do like, share, subscribe. Any way you can support, comment, let me know what you think of these shoes, of the channel, uh, any requests, uh, so I can reach out to other makers and ask if they want to send a pair. Anyway, thank you as always for tuning in. I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.